All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. As one Crookshank, your one and only Moose Swiftly speaker checking in for a daily Moose Swiftly thought, giving you a perspective on teamwork that you will not get anywhere else. Here we go. Game, set, match. Coordinates, March 31st, 2024. It, be it has become official. Women's college basketball. We got it. We got it. We wanted it. We got it. LSU taking on Iowa. Lead eight. Who's going to the final four rematch? from last year's national championship. And again, you know, if you recall, if you've been keeping up with me from last year, you know, after that game, I gave a, a I gave my opinion on how the whole thing went in regards to Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And, you know, again, if, if I had my, if I had my choice of who I would do an NIL deal with, it would probably be Caitlin Clark because of the image. But at the end of the day, who I'm picking, who I'm picking for the game, because Angel Reese is from the DMV. You got, you know, when, when when folks from Maryland, when folks from my hometown make it to those national, get to those national stages, you gotta support that. You gotta support the DMV one. So that it is. As much as I love me, as much as I love me, I love me. So, in fact, today's move swiftly thought is all about Caitlin Clark and the offer that she got to play in the Big Three. But as much as I love watching Caitlin Clark play, I gotta pick, gotta go with LSU. I gotta go with LSU strictly because, strictly because Angel Reese is from the DMV and she reps the DMV. And you know, again, when you get the DMV folks making it to the national stage, one wins, we all win. So, you know, gotta pick, gotta pick LSU to, to, to get back to a final four. And boy, man, oh man, would I love to see another LSU USC matchup, the, 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 just the, the hate, the rivalry. I just love it. I just love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. So I got to love college sports, man. Greatest. It's the greatest game in the world. College sports. You get hungry, young kids that are just out there scrapping and balling, doing whatever it is they got to do. I love the essence of college sports. You know, when it gets to that point where you get two teams that are just going after it, it was, it was a great day of basketball, a great weekend of basketball, man. It's been fun. It's been fun just watching it man especially myself being someone that's very active in the nil space it takes on a, a completely different tone all right completely different tone with me as far as today's move swiftly thought we're like i mentioned we're gonna get into let's get into this let's get into this offer that caitlin clark received this week to play in the big three she for those of you who don't know i'll give you a quick recap ice cube the founder of the three on three basketball league named the big three offered caitlin clark five million dollars to play <laughs> yes with an m five million with an m she he offered her five million dollars to be a part and to play in the big three a i believe it's a summer league it's a summer league that goes on a three-on-three -three basketball league that he's created and he's been very vocal very very vocal with his <laughs> with his feud and the kind of the disgust and the frustration that he's had with Adam Silver and the lack of support that he's gotten from the NBA and things of that nature. And that's really, that brings me to the overall takeaway from today's thought, all right? Like when you're out there grinding, when you want to take on, excuse me, when you're ready to make big moves and you're ready to take on major entities and you want to really establish something that you truly believe in, you have got to make a bold offer. All right, you got to make a bold offer that basically gives the establishment the proverbial finger, right? <laughs> you got to make the offer that basically gives these big establishment, these bigger companies and says, look, fuck you. Because what Ice Cube did with that offer, just with the statement in itself, and I'll get into if she should take it or not, which by the way, I do, do, I do think that she does need to take the offer, but we'll, I'll get into that in a second here. But when it comes to everything that I've heard Ice Cube say, and I, I encourage you guys to go out and listen to the Pivot podcast. When Ice Cube was on the Pivot podcast, he explained everything and he talked about some of the jobs that the big three is all about. He talked about the way that his vision and what he wants it to be and how it can create opportunities for people post playing career and just, you know, grow the game, do whatever it needs to do. And he feels like, again, if Adam Silver, you know, cared so much about how black lives matter, then why wouldn't, why wouldn't? there'd be some sort of a, a formal partnership, a formal announcement 
when it comes to everything that he's created when it comes to the big three, all right? And that's when, you, when you're facing those, that kind of resistance, when you're facing people who, again, know about what you do, hear about what you do, just are deliberately choosing to ignore it for one reason or the other, aren't choosing, aren't looking to sit with you, you have to go and make an offer that gives that person the finger. And the reason that this offer gives the NBA the finger is because the big three is played during the WNBA season. So she would have to choose. She would have to choose between the WNBA and the, if I'm not mistaken, I know it's somewhere around the, the bottom line is I know that the WNBA isn't offering her no damn $5 million. <laughs> that's, that's for damn sure. And that has been for years now, that has been the complaint from ladies who play in the WNBA is that the pay is just ridiculous. And for him to make a $5 million offer to the person, to the player who's projected to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft and the WNBA is part of the NBA. He's basically saying, look, come work with me. <laughs> you form of you, you big time college players, come roll with me and I'll hook you up. I'll, I'll set you up better than they'll set you up with at the WNBA, which is why in my opinion, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark needs to really really consider this offer i really feel like she needs to take it not just for her but because for so long understand this for so long women have been complaining about the pay when it comes to wnba they've been complaining about you know how it's not right and you know the the, the average salary is this and they're only playing it i mean to, in my opinion the wnba has been a disaster when it comes to the business model of it and trust me i grew up in the dmv so I was there when they were calling Shamika Holswell the neck, the female Michael Jordan when it just started. And for years, for years, like 20, over 20 years at this point now, they've, they've been complaining about the same thing. They, the pay isn't this, the pay isn't that. So if you get an offer for $5 million, I'd be like, I feel like she has to take it or use that offer as leverage to make it so the next Caitlin Clark can get paid what she deserves or what she feels like she deserves. So understand when you get into these when you get into these conversations and when it's when we're talking professional sports and having young kids look up to you and things of that nature, it's not just about you. It's about the the young athletes coming up behind you. Understand that, you know, when LeBron James decided to when LeBron James decided that he wasn't going to take that $10 million, that $10 million that Adidas offered him because he was going to hold out for a bigger, a better offer, that opened the door for the next LeBron James. Or so when even Michael Jordan decided, look, if he's going to roll with Nike, I want to get points, I want to get a dollar amount of every shoe that's sold. Again, look at the business and look at the brand that he's built from that, you know, from that, from that one deal. So understand when you're talking professional sports and if you are Caitlin if you're Caitlin Clark and you're thinking about this offer, it's bigger than you and you have to you have to consider and you have to think about what's gonna be best for the next young athlete coming up because you have so many people looking up to you, so many followers, so many young athletes that are you you are their role models, all right? So some thoughts on that offer and I trust you, I have a lot, I have a lot of coming on the whole basketball world right now. I'm in the, we're in the middle of a basketball season. Basketball season is at its height. We got, you know, March Madness and then a few weeks we got the NBA playoffs coming up. So I have a, I'm gonna have a whole lot of thoughts when it comes to the basketball where, you know, basketball is how I really learned a business side. I mean, football is always gonna be me, but growing up in the DMV, you see a lot of business when it comes to basketball, sports marketing business, you know, that that's where it's all at. You know, that's exactly where it's at. So stay tuned for that. Next few days, gonna have a lot of material on that as well. <sighs> Main website to check out to dive deeper into all my work, makeyoungmove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. One-stop shop for all your teamwork and your self-development needs as one Crookshank and one and only Move Swiftly speaker. Checking out, you guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.